My name is Mark Billinghurst, I'm from the Hit Lab New Zealand. I'm going to speak for the next 20 minutes or so about um, more specific opportunities around the framework program, especially in the area of digital uh, content. But first, just to give you a background, um, the Hit Lab New Zealand is, um, well, I guess as you just heard from Eric, one of the leading centres for interface research in New Zealand. We're located at the University of Canterbury. We've been there almost 10 years, and we have 40 uh, staff and students. And we do research in these main um, four areas, uh, augmented reality, uh, three graphics and visualisation, teleconferencing and interaction um, design. And over the last um, a few years, we have built up quite a large number of international collaborators, both in, in Europe, Asia, and in the US. And what we've done over the last uh, five or six years is, is uh, use those collaborations to help engage in international collaborative research, and in particular research with the EU. So um, this is kind of a snapshot of, of some of the EU work we've been doing. Um, we started in 2004 by setting up an EU New Zealand student exchange program um, with the University of Waikato and also the Wanganui uh, School of Design. And so over the course of three years we had um, quite a number of New Zealand students that we helped send from um, here over to, to Europe and also we hosted uh, students from uh, Europe back into New Zealand um, as well. And so we received some money from the New Zealand government to support that and that was fantastic because by having student exchanges that enables uh, researchers at both locations to collaborate um, together, which is really great. Um, we've also been involved in two uh, Framework 6 projects. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, but at one point, we were the only research group involved in the ICT uh, Framework 6 project. That was the IP City and the Callus project. Um, and these are very large um, integrated uh, projects in Europe. Um, we currently uh, have an URSUS grant, which is a Another exchange program, but this is more for faculty exchanges. So this is um, it supports uh, New Zealand researchers who want to go over to spend uh, between three and six months um, in a European institution. So we're partnering it with the University of Otago, and we're collaborating with the Fraunhofer Institute, um, with the Helsinki University of Technology, and also with the Technical University of Graz in Aus Austria. And so over the last couple of years, we've had a number of our uh, staff who've gone over and spent significant amounts of time with these institutions. Um, with the Ursus grant, there's no money for research, but the money is just for travel, and it's an, again a really valuable way to build joint research relationships with, with large um, EU projects. And then we're currently involved with the Eurasia Pack, which you're here for. Um, underlying all this, for the last uh, five or six years, I've been involved with uh, proposal reviewing, and I would encourage anybody in the room who wants to get involved with EU projects to try and sign up for this. Um, it turns out in Europe, they have many large projects, and if you're in a particular research field, when the EU puts a call for proposals out, almost everybody in Europe in that field puts a proposal in. So it means it's very hard for the EU to find uh, proposal reviewers inside of Europe. So they're always looking for people outside of Europe to re review the pro proposals. So I've been doing that for um, six or seven years now, and it's a fantastic way for you to see lots of proposals and for you to understand what makes a good proposal. So if you want to um, propose um, and get involved with, with EU proposals, as a first step, I'd really encourage you to um, register as a reviewer and you'll then become very uh, familiar with what makes a great proposal. So in specifics, um, we're involved first of all with the CALIS project. The CALIS stands for Conveying Effectiveness and Leading Edge Living Adaptive Systems. And the basic idea was to build um, computer interfaces for digital entertainment that react or that recognize a uh, user's emotion and then react to that emotion. So, um, one example would be an interactive museum exhibit that lets you play music, and as you get happier, the music you play starts sounding happier as well. So this is a typical uh, EU project. Um, it's a really large project, so it has 18 uh, partners from eight countries um, over the course of three and a half years, and collectively they had um, six and a half million euros um, of research. Um, and that, that lab involvement was in, it was quite specific. We were, we were involved in the project to develop uh, augmented reality authoring tools. They were using augmented reality as one of their platforms to uh, show off the, the, the interfaces. And to support our involvement, we received money from the New Zealand government through FORCE, um, this IOF fund, which was to support international collaboration. So we received almost a million dollars over three years to support our involvement. And in many ways, this is a really good return on investment for FORCE because they put a million dollars in, but um, by being one of the core partners, we got access to all the IP being developed by all the partners. So in, in return for the million dollar investment from New Zealand, um, we got access to almost uh, $13 million of um, EU uh, funded 
um, research. And it's not only access to the, 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 the uh, research outcomes, it's also the partnerships and the collaborations you build as well. So, of course, with those 18 partners, we've got an ongoing relationship with some of them, and we can hopefully put, put more proposals in the future. If you're interested in all the specifics, you can go to the website um, there. The second project we've been involved with is IP City. And IP City is an interesting project that looks um, at developing new technologies that will change or enable people to experience past and future views of their cities. So you can see, for example, in the picture here, this is a, um, a building, uh, a real building, but on top of the real building, this is a virtual building that appears overlaid on it as well. And so uh, through the IP City uh, consortium, people were developing technologies that will let um, urban designers to go out into the real world and see virtual buildings put into the real world and see what the city might look like in the future. Or to, to go around with mobile phones and hear stories of people telling what the city was like 50 or 60 years ago. So again, this was a large um, project consortium, this time 11 partners with um, 6 million euros um, in the project. And um, in, in this case, we weren't able to secure any additional funding from the New Zealand government for our involvement. But um, we had an existing uh, forced project um, involving mobile augmented reality, and that uh, enabled us to become a core partner and the partners in the project, and Europe wanted us to join with them. And so again, the benefit we get from this is the ongoing collaboration with the partners, as well as access to all this um, IP. And as a result of this IP City project, we then secured the URSUS funding to enable um, ongoing exchanges. So now um, all three um, European institutions that are involved in the URSUS exchange um, were partners in IP City, and the focus of the URSUS project is on mobile augmented reality and urban environments. So it's a continuation in some ways of this. So that's our involvement in the, in the six framework, just to give you some context. Now what I want to do um, briefly is talk about the Framework 7 program and specifically some of the ICT opportunities in that. So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the European framework programs, but um, these are large um, research efforts um, that are re released every four or five years with different themes. In the Framework 7 program, in total, the EU is going to spend 50.5 uh, billion um, euro over from 2007 to 2013. Um, which is, of course, a huge amount of money compared to what we spent in R&D in New Zealand. Um, and um, almost a, a, a little over 9 billion in euro of that is specifically for ICT um, research. And uh, this um, list here is a list of areas for research over the whole program, and you can see ICT is listed um, down there as well. So it's a wide range of different research topics. Uh, there are a number of different types of com countries that can participate, so of course the European Union companies, uh, countries have full access to all the funding. There are also international cooperation partners like Russia, Eastern Europe, or developing countries. They can also get funding from the EU, but they need to um, be involved in proposals with EU partners. And there are industrial, um, high, industrialized high income countries like New Zealand that can be involved in the EU projects as partners, but they're mostly self financing. So sometimes the New Zealand government has schemes that you can use to support your involvement. Sometimes you can get funding from the EU partners, depending upon um, if you can show you've got skills that they can't find in Europe. And other times, you may have existing research programs you're doing here in New Zealand, you might want to connect up or partner with the EU project anyway. So in the Framework 7 program, there are a number of different um, areas of, uh, a number of different programs um, that you can get funding for. The one of the largest is, is cooperation um, research. These are large collaborative research projects. The EU will also fund single teams, they'll also fund um, individual people and mobility, so the Ursus grant we have is forms in the mobility section where the funding is just for travel and, and, and living expenses. They will also fund um, large um, infrastructure research and they've got a separate category for nuclear research um, as well. And the funding schemes um, in the collaborative projects, they basically have three um, areas. So one is this FET Open, which is a very um, short, easy to write proposal. It's a five-page proposal, and, then, and then basically the EU are looking for very wide, wild and wacky, uh, future-looking ideas. Then they have small projects, which are called STREPs, which are typically um, five or so partners, around two million euros, so small but very large for New Zealand, um, of course. And then there's integrated projects, which are the large ones that we've been involved with, 10 to 20 partners, and anywhere from five to 12 million euros. Um, there are also networks of excellence opportunities where basically they provide um, uh, collaborative funding to enable uh, groups to uh, establish joint programs of research and then coordinate the support actions which, the, uh, which Eurasia Bank is and individual projects. Here's the breakdown of money um, for cooperative programs. So you can see, in fact, the um, ICT, the 9.1 billion in ICT research from 2007-2013 is actually the largest 
um, um, allocation of the EU funding in Framework 7. So it's certainly a great opportunity for New Zealand researchers and, and, and companies to tap into that. Um, in the ICT um, area, the EU have identified specific challenges, and here are seven of them. Um, I guess this, this was shown a little bit earlier by Eric and showing how our capabilities match the challenges. But you can see they're doing a big emphasis right now on cognitive systems and robotics, um, embedded systems, uh, technologies for digital content, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. There's health, um, low carbon economy, uh, manufacturing, um, learning and access to cultural resources, and then the future emerging technologies. So I'll talk about just a couple of those. So in digital lang content and language, um, the uh, funding uh, is focused on four areas, really. Um, the first is um, helping develop tools that will make it easier or uh, to create digital content, in particular by small medium enterprises. So there's a lot of small companies in Europe that don't have um, the ability to uh, use very expensive pieces of software or equipment to develop digital content, so they're trying to develop new ways to do that. Um, the second area of focus is to allow people to access online content across language barriers. So of course with the EU you've got um, 25 or 30 languages uh, spoken in the EU at least. So they're trying to look at ways that they can take digital content and easily uh, transcribe it or uh, 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 display it across different languages and they will be from a wide range of different languages to get and access the content. Um, the fourth is design digital content for engineering obsolescence. So the idea is if you um, try and look at um, 3D models that were created 20 years ago or even um, films or images, sometimes you can't read those files anymore. So how do you d develop digital content now that can be accessed um, in 50 years or 100 years time from now? And then the final one is uh, scaling up digital analysis to keep pace with the rate and growth of data collection. So of course now we have more and more ability to create large amounts of digital data. You know, everybody has cell phones that have 5 or 8 or 12 megapixel cameras. And so huge amounts of digital uh, data have been put onto the web and other locations. So as we create more and more digital content, how can we create tools that can analyze that content in a better way? So here are some specific, um, um, those broken down specific objectives. So um, the first one is this, um, as I just mentioned, this SME initiative on digital content. So looking at how we can um, reuse digital content, create um, open source digital exchanges for content, um, and they've allocated 35 million euros to that. The second is language technology, so developing tools for machine translation, for data, text mining. Also, more interestingly, looking for natural spoken interaction. So how can you develop systems that let people use um, a wide range of spoken languages to interact with them? And there's some emphasis on digital preservation. So um, uh, developing software tools that can repair um, damaged digital objects. So you know, if you've got a, a, an image file that is uh, corrupted, how can you rec um, recover that? If you've got a 3D model that's missing pieces and so forth. And then also intelligent management of, of um, digital content. And the final is intelligent information management. Again, 50 euros allocated to, 50 million euros allocated to that. So this is um, really an area of visual analytics. So once you have very, very large data sets, um, if you've got um, image data sets of hundreds of millions of photographs, how do you develop software tools that will be able to analyze and um, interact with those um, data sets? The second area I want to talk about is um, ICD access to cultural resources. Oh, I should mention, just going back here, that um, from Eric's presentation, you would have seen that there are groups in New Zealand that have expertise in some of these areas, and in particular Ian Witten's group, the digital libraries group at the University of Waikato, have a vast range of expertise in text um, mining, and there are other groups in the general work in other areas related to this as well. So the um, challenge number eight is the ICD access to cultural resources. And this is basically um, uh, around research that will um, enable um, access to um, digital information for education, training, or cultural uh, purposes. So basically, how do we learn through um, ICT? How do we enhance um, meaning through providing digital, cultural, and scientific resources? And there's also applications in this for providing training in schools or in workplaces, or providing interactive museum experiences, digital libraries, or other cultural institutions. And so they're really looking at focusing on using technologies such as pervasive uh, computing technologies, social networking, or mobile technologies, and using these to present um, educational experiences in different ways. So in this case, there's just two objectives they've, annou uh, um, they've announced. The first is technology enhanced learning. So there's 60 million euros allocated to this. And um, so this is developing and doing research for learning in the workplace. Um, in particular, they're very interested in 
um, just-in-time education. So when people start using complicated machinery or equipment, how can you use um, ICT um, technology to be able to enable somebody to very quickly learn how to use piece of equipment? Um, they're interested in uh, computational tools that will provide new uh, outlooks, for, outlooks for creativity, and then also provide new educational technologies for science, um, technology, and, and mathematics in again, schools and workplace or in museums. Then there's a lot of funding, and 40 million euros are being applied to um, ICT for access to cultural resources. So um, Europe, of course, has a, a vast um, cultural history, and there's in this area they'd like to look at technologies for digitizing some of these cultural resources and how do you how do you uh, digitally represent and capture some of the um, priceless artifacts that are scattered throughout Europe, um, providing access to cultural resources for research and education. So once you digitize all these artifacts, and how do you let people anywhere in Europe you know see the Mona Lisa or visit the Leaning Tower of Pisa and so forth, and then also creating personalized and engaging cultural experiences. So this is tapping into intelligent learning systems, intelligent tutoring systems, and using that to provide a personalized experience for your learning. So how do you find out all about this stuff? Well, one um, key uh, place to go to is the Cordis website. And this is um, and this, uh, this is the URL into my presentation here. And um, on this website here, it has all the information about the Framework 7 program. And most importantly, it has all the information about calls for funding uh, currently available for the Framework 7 program. So here's the top level of the website, and then you drill down. This is the current calls for proposals, and you'll see a whole list, um, not just ICT proposals, but, but all the proposals. Now, in particular, there are two currently open calls for proposals. So the first is the SME Initiative on Digital Content and Language. Um, this will be relevant for potentially New Zealand, small New Zealand uh, companies, but also for New Zealand researchers and universities if they can partner with the European um, SME. So you may, you know, you may know a small um, European um, company that's interested in, in um, machine translation, for example. You can partner with them and then put a proposal in with some other companies as well. And this has a deadline for April 28th and um, a 35 million um, euro um, budget. Um, then. And I should mention, previously I showed, if I go back a little bit here, these different objectives here. Um, each of these objectives will have a call for proposals coming out every six months or so. So the first one, 4.1, is what I just showed, and then in six months' time or so, 4.2 will come out, and so forth. But um, uh, the EU is always, always looking for kind of wild and wacky proposals, and so the FET Open is the way to do that. And this is a, a call for proposal which is always happening. So the FET Open, the next one is in um, May 2011, and every six months they have a call for proposals here. And the FET Open proposals are small ones that typically involve two to three or four partners, up to about two million euros, which is still very nice for a New Zealand researcher to you know, be able to get um, two or three hundred K euro a year of research. And the budget for this is, is 46 million euro. The nice thing about FET Open is that to put a, put a proposal on, you only have to write five pages. And if you've got two or three partners, that basically means a page per partner. So anybody can do that. Um, so for more information, uh, these are the key websites that you need to go to. Um, the uh, Cordis website in particular, and these um, the um, Europa websites have more high-level information about the Framework 7 uh, program. But certainly, based on what Eric said, and my own experience of the New Zealand ICT um, um, industry and academia, we definitely have people here um, sitting in this room that could bid in for some of the um, existing calls or some of the calls that will be in the future. And as I said, there's 9, million, 9 billion euros of R&D money out there for us to become part of. So thank you very much um, for your time.